of the many mistakes that I see runners making, holding them back from consistent progress in their training and better race day performances. One of the most common ones has to be around exercise intensity prescription and execution while you're out training. To help the members of my run group with this problem, I put together a video outlining the science of the five skeleton workouts that form the fundamental basis of the thousands of workouts and training plans that I've built over the years. And I wanna share that video with you here. So let's get into it. First off, we have your zone two run. For me, that's 75 to 88% of lactate threshold heart rate. And I find that heart rate works really well. And these zone two runs can be anything from 15 minutes to three hours, depending on what you're training for. But they are the bread and butter. Now the core mistake that I see is average heart rate versus real time heart rate. What I mean by this is I was out with a guy the other day and I was like, we're going up the hill pretty quick. And I was thinking, I asked him, what's your heart rate? And he's like, oh yeah, 149. You said below 155, right? 140 to 155 is pretty much the zone two. So 149, right in the middle. And I was like, average? And he's like, yeah, average heart rate. And I was like, well, what's your real time heart rate? And it was 160. Now that's five beats over 155, so we're going up. The hill, way too hard. What's your power? His power is pretty much zone four and his heart rate's continuing to climb as we run up this hill. And this is what I see a lot. This is essentially cray zone junk training. What you're trying to do is elicit a low dose consistent stimulus that you can recover from that's very specific to building mitochondrial volume so you can build aerobic capacity to burn oxygen and fat, create ATP, generate higher force production within your muscles so that you can run faster for lesser or the same effort. When you start to apply these hard efforts within your zone two run, you are not getting a specific stimulus and you're starting to add fatigue unnecessarily, which causes part of this unproductive, undesirable training that then needs to be reset later on. Then we have our zone three. So for me, that's 88% to 95% of your lactate threshold, heart rate, pace, or power. What I use here, pace, power, heart rate is really going to be heart rate, power, then pace. Now the reason I do that is, again, we want to, with heart rate, adjust to the level of fatigue that we're carrying throughout our training. Then, depending on the specificity of this workout, for you guys, what I'm going to say is we'll do a 15 minute warm up, and then we'll do 30 minutes of hilly tempo and that's gonna be heart rate based and then a 15 minute cool down. Now we're using heart rate here and we're using a hilly terrain so that we can elicit a breadth of muscle recruitment profiles. We've got long stride length, short ground contact time, then we've got really large muscle mass recruitment on the uphills, long ground contact time, and really short stride length. So by doing that and using heart rate, initially as our core metric, then we're making sure that we're not overdoing these workouts. Now that's for just kind of your standard, I guess, base phase workout, where we're not really looking for anything specific, we're just trying to add a little more intensity into our aerobic conditioning. If we were to look at moving towards a half marathon or a marathon, build phase and then later on in the marathon preparation or taper phase if you don't know what I'm talking about you check out my four phase marathon build up that's where we start to look at power and pace so we're getting specificity in our outputs and we start to accumulate the amount of time that we want to work at the zone three I'd want around a minimum of 20 minutes for consistent zone three work when we're looking at building our specificity and volume and intensity relative to what we need to achieve in a half marathon that's closer to two hours or the marathon for the majority of people, at least under four hours or so, where the majority of what you are going to be running at is going to be your zone three, 88% to 95% of your lactate threshold heart rate and pace or power. And from there, when we're looking at the 20 minutes, a minimum, we want to accumulate at least an hour when we're building towards these events. Now, when we're looking at a marathon in particular, you want to build to at least two hours of zone three work. I call it like a broken run, where we'd have 25K, or what would that be, around 15, 16 miles of 
zone three work and you can just break that down into just really small like 20 minute chunks and then as you build through into the build preparation phase you can stretch that out into six mile segments or three mile segments and the key mistake that i see there is people thinking they can overachieve on their zone three runs push it into zone four if we start to go into the zone four or the zone five thinking oh, i feel great and my heart rate's not too bad we are losing some of that specificity so that would be the zone three run and the next workout is going to be a zone four workout and it is the workout that i would say is most incorrectly implemented by athletes and coaches and this is a reason that i have seven zones rather than the traditional five and it's a sub threshold run now the sub threshold run is for me 95 to 100 percent of your lactate threshold either heart rate pace or power typically for these we are looking at an output metric rather than input like heart rate so we're looking at power or pace now the reason i say it's most incorrectly implemented is because most people think as soon as we get above marathon pace it's time to push it and i'll always always see this run being essentially 10k effort and that's not what it is we are still trying to operate at a specific stimulus that just sits below that threshold so still in the steady state banner that steady state banner is typically associated at least in my mind with lactate production that is still being able to buffered by the clearance by the bicarbonate pool or gl gluconeogenesis or any other kind of metabolic process that allows us to minimize the impacts of the lactate itself and then the acidity within the muscle cell then if we're chronically just exercising well above that within these sessions this is where you'll find you don't have any strength at the back end of your half marathon because you've essentially been working for like a 45 minute duration more similarly to a 10k where you're able to tolerate large amounts of blood lactate high lactate concentrations we even got super efficient at sub threshold intensity where there's a moderate amount of lactate that we can still handle by shuttling buffering reusing within our metabolic system and it's at that intensity where you'll be operating at in a half marathon so something like this is around multiples of about 15 minutes and we want to be looking at 95 to 100 percent of your threshold the super confusing part here is probably around the heart rate where when we're looking at initial 15 minutes let's say you've done 15 20 minutes of pretty easy zone one zone two warm up and you start out at around half marathon pace it'll take at least probably 15 minutes for your heart rate to indicate that you are operating at or near your threshold relative to your heart rate and that's what caused a lot of runners to overexert themselves in the first interval and then you know the saying once you start you know whatever pace you hit you can't go backwards from there and then we're just now we're doing three by 15 minutes with a three minute recovery we're what about 50 minutes in over our last interval and we've just overexerted ourselves and we're again in gray zone territory where we've got a specific intensity and stimulus that we're trying to elicit and adapt to and we're just going beyond that with nothing that's really specific to anything that we're trying to achieve so from that we want to do a 20 15 minute kind of warm-up then we're just getting into the sub threshold that just under a hundred percent so around for a lot of people half marathon intensity and then we will push through 15 minutes of that times three and we'll have a three minute recovery which can just be easy or jog you really should feel like you're in the position where you could just jog it if you wanted to and with heart rate over that last interval we want to make sure that it is stable so for the last 10 minutes or so of that third 15 minute interval we want to make sure that heart rate's nice and stable because we're looking for steady state from the three by 15 minutes you can start to build volume via distance or duration if you're building towards a half marathon you can start to incorporate distance so that you're getting up to around 10 miles or 15 kilometers worth of the sub threshold work and you can do that by adding repetitions or combining the repetitions so that something like this three by 15 minutes becomes say a 30 minute and then a 15 minute then we've got the zone four five intervals 
Now we've just done zone four, why aren't we jumping straight into zone five? And it's because I like to set 95 to 105% for threshold specific intensities when we're looking at pace power outputs. The reason I do this, and for a lot of people, this is going to be in a fine zone system, the typical zone four threshold zone. And I like to have such a wide breadth, whereas normally closer to a specific intensity like marathon, half marathon, 10K, we, I do like to narrow that band to around 5% is because within training, I've seen such a huge inter-individual variability where I have runners that can run for easily over an hour at 100 to 105%, whereas I have other runners who can barely last 45 minutes at just under 98%. Maybe the threshold set incorrectly, maybe it's temperature thing, maybe it's a genetic component, whatever it is, it's probably all of the above. But what I like to have because of the nature of fatigue and environmental impacts of training, especially at these higher intensities, is a larger band so that if you were running one week feeling amazing, you can hit 103 to 105% of your pace power output, pretty much bang on that gold 10K output. Whereas other weeks, you've just done a long run, you're in the third week of a block, you're pretty tired, you can run 97, 98% of your threshold, but because of the fatigue within the muscle and the deeper motor units that you're having to recruit to elicit the same kind of or lesser force output, you could still be in a metabolic environment that's generating really high lactate concentrations. And for the workout, what we're gonna look at is a five times one mile to four times 2K. So we're looking at five to 10 minute range and we're looking at two minute recoveries. I'm gonna do a separate video on why I think work to rest ratios are kind of outdated in the modern era. Because when I'm thinking about a work to rest ratio, specifically about the rest relative to the work, I'm thinking about what is the metabolic environment that we need to exist in within the race and how can we do that and replicate that in training. So while there may be lots of recommendations out there, I'm specifically thinking if we're working around eight to 10 minutes and we're getting a two minute recovery, we're getting a relatively large amount of replenishment of the anaerobic component in terms of the creatine phosphate pathway or just the ATP pool within our muscle cell, as well as the clearance of the acidity and the reabsorption of the calcium that allows for the contractile capability in the filaments. And then we're also got the buffering of lactate itself within the bicarbonate pool within the bloodstream and I'm not too worried about heart rate within these I'm more worried about the work interval itself and so then we're unsurprisingly moving on to the final workout in the system which is going to be a zone 6 workout which is VO2 max specific VO2 max being the maximal amount of oxygen that is demanded by the work the mechanical or muscle work that you're doing. It can be kind of confusing because it's VO2 max, maximal oxygen utilization, but you're gonna be working for like one to five minutes max, and there's obviously a high anaerobic component to that. The reason it's VO2 max is because although you're operating at majority an anaerobic work intensity, because of the large amount of muscle that you are recruiting to operate or run at that speed, there is a really large aerobic component. So every muscle cell is going to have some component of aerobic metabolism, regardless how anaerobically dominant or glycolytically dominant that muscle is. And so when we compare that to a zone two run, you're just running so much fast with such a larger muscle mass that the oxygen requirement does increase rather dramatically. And for these workouts, the workout I'll give you, I'll give you two, bit of a bonus one. I'll give you two, the one that I want is one minute on, so 10 times one minute on, one minute off, and then you go into, if you are feeling it, depends on where you are in your training cycle, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. And so within this workout, you're able to get really high VO2 max, like zone six specific outputs, but you're getting the recoveries so that lactate never actually builds beyond what it would have done in the zone four, five workouts. So we get really good adaptations across lactate threshold, across force production, across speed, across aerobic capabilities, but we don't have the recovery demands of the next work I'll talk about is when we're building towards a 5K specifically. So we need to be able to tolerate really high lactate concentrations at really high force outputs. So for something like this, 
you want to use maybe like a descending protocol where you have five minutes at your goal 5k race pace which really depends on where you are in your speed or fitness capabilities i can run around 15 16 minutes other people around 20 other people around 25 so initially the workout i'll give you is just going to be specific to time and you could probably implement a distance associated with that so we'll do five minutes at your goal output and then we're just getting one minute recovery into two times three minutes and so at this point we're at 11 minutes of total vo2 max or 5k specific work again one minute recoveries and then we're just into a block of five times one minute and these five times one minute takes us to 16 minutes total and that's the starting point of a session like this the one minute recoveries especially after a five minute initial block at that really high intensity mean that we're still operating under really high acidity really high lactate concentrations in the blood so we're getting that specificity but then we still at this stage like early on say eight weeks out from a 5k targeted event we're still able to build the the force outputs and get quality speed and then like i said in some of those other intervals what we can do is start to condense those in or we can start to increase the duration so where we've got five minutes into two by three maybe we do two by five into one by three into five by two depends on how long your race is going to be and then i want to touch on one of the big mistakes i made as an athlete and then subsequently as a coach that will really help you be able to utilize these workouts and it's knowing your zones it's having that base reference point so that you are training specifically to your capabilities and not just some arbitrary number that you've picked out of the sky once i built that premise and was able to associate all of these workouts with these specific demands then i was able to start building to the point where now i run a 112 for a half marathon i run 15 minutes for 5k then the mistake i made within coaching in the initial phase was actually trying to figure out exactly where all the break points were for every single athlete so they had an exact pinpoint accurate output that they could target within every interval within every session then i realized that well actually people get tired <laughs> the conditions change there's wind there's inaccuracies and that having a bandwidth of around that five percent and higher as we move through into higher intensities within training within the race we can narrow those bands down but in training we actually need the capability and capacity to take a step off the gas and know that when we're fatigued, we can be working under our specific output. That's not a throwaway workout. That's still really beneficial in the overall big picture. And that's me for today. I look forward to hearing about your experiences in the comments. Check out my other videos for more helpful tips to get your running on track. And I'll see you on the next one.